All right, you gotta let go. You gotta let go. He does not wanna let go. Just wanted to let you guys know that I have a new Remembering Chai design up in my Teespring shop now. If you shop between now and December 25th, you can save 10% off any purchases in my store with code SAVE10. Thank you guys so much for all your support. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to be talking about beginner tarantulas. Now I made a video talking about the top five beginner tarantulas like four years ago. And that video actually accumulated like 50,000 views, which was huge for me at the time because I had just made my channel. Like it was probably one of the first 10 videos I've ever made. I had just started keeping tarantulas around the time that I made that. So I didn't have as much experience with other species. So in this video, I will be talking talking about five more really great beginner species. Let's just go ahead and get right into it. So coming in at number five is going to be the Green Bottle Blue. So this is Gumdrop and she is my first Green Bottle Blue that I ever got and the only one I've had. Let's go ahead and try dropping her a worm. <laughs> and she took it just as expected. So some of the pros about these are that they are readily available. They're pretty easily bred, so that's why they are very popular and easy to find and not too terribly expensive. Their growth rate is also really good. They grow very steady. I had her when she was a sling. This is Gumdrop though. Um... Obviously, I'm not sure if it's a female or male. He or she is still too small. And now, four years later, I have a really beautiful sub-adult female. They're also really easy to keep because they don't have a very high humidity requirement. They're really great in a dry substrate with like a water dish that you occasionally fill up. And they're also really pretty colored. So if you're looking for something that's colorful, you will definitely enjoy one of these. They're also a little bit more entertaining than other tarantulas because as you will see, they're busy. They web a lot, they're out a lot. The only cons that I can really think of is that they do have a tendency to kick their hair very readily. <laughs> Even as a sling, she did kick her hair pretty often when I would take off the lid just to feed her. And also they are pretty fast, so you're not going to want to handle this kind of tarantula like it's generally frowned upon to handle tarantulas anyway but a green bottle blue can be quite fast so I would just be really careful and like if it's something that you're going to try to handle I probably wouldn't go with a green bottle blue just my personal opinion but other than that they're really cool and really easy to take care of and for sure a good beginner tarantula so coming in at number four is going to be the Afonopilma Samani so this is my female Afonopilma Samani something I really like about Afonopilma Samani is that they are readily available you can find them as slings and as adults and they're pretty inexpensive I think I purchased her as an adult female for about $60. I think that was a little bit of a deal, but an adult female shouldn't cost too much more. They're super hardy species and they're also pretty friendly, but the cons are is that they can be a little skittish and also they are commonly wild caught. So if you're getting an adult, it's probably going to be a wild caught specimen. And if you're getting a sling, they grow painfully slow, like all of Phonopelma. So those are things to keep in mind. But I mean, they're a great tarantula to start off with. You see them a lot in pet stores. So I feel like a lot of people wind up with them as their first tarantula anyway. And they also have like a really interesting color variation where sometimes they will be blue and other times they'll be a little bit more gray or brown. But if you're looking for a first tarantula, this is definitely a species to look at. All right, so next up, we have a little guy right here. <laughs> and we also have peaches, my Brachypilma hamori. Now you could also apply most of this to the smithy, which is basically their twin. However, the smithy is a little bit more rare and expensive so we're going to be talking about the Hamori because that's going to be something more available for you. I actually have three of these. I'm going to show you two of them. But this is my smallest one and I've been growing this one out for quite a while. I'm actually pretty happy with the growth I've seen in this. Now they don't grow super fast, like as fast as the Green Bottle Blue, but they do have a medium growth. So if you get a sling, they're not going to be a sling forever or seemingly forever like the Afonopilma. I have a little worm here for this one so we can try feeding her. There we go. Oh my goodness. What a takedown for a little one. But as you see, just super duper easy to house. This is an acrylic um, baseball or softball display. Since they grow kind of slow, they're happy in something like this for quite a while. And then once they get bigger, you're gonna wanna put them in something obviously larger. This is the large tarantula cribs enclosure. 
which is my personal favorite. And then here we have peaches. Now peaches is a little hair kicky. That is a con with this species. They do have a tendency to kick hair like most Brachypelma. A lot of people really love those orange knees. I'm one of those people. Big fan of the black and orange spiders over here, just dressed for Halloween year round. Let's see if peaches wants this. There he goes. But yeah, I would say that these are like probably <laughs> the most known beginner species of tarantula, but they live up to that reputation. They're a great beginner species and definitely one of my favorites, one of the first species that I really wanted to get. Mm-mm, there's that hair kicking. No, thank you. Okay, so now we are at number two, which is possibly my favorite species ever, like my favorite tarantula species, which has like not changed in years. It's the first thing that comes to mind, at least every time somebody asks me, what's your favorite tarantula species? Sometimes I have different answers, but it's always the first one that comes to mind. And that is the Gramistola pulchra or the Brazilian black. Now, Salem is feeling especially shy today. I don't know what he's doing. I'm not gonna destroy his entire enclosure today, but I could try to feed him. Oh my gosh, there he is. All right, you gotta let go. You gotta let go. He does not want to let go. You gotta let go. You got it. You got it, my dude. Jeez, look at that grip. Come on, dude, let go. He's for real not letting go. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Salem. So Salem is kind of the exception here when I say that Brazilian black are incredibly calm because he was my first Grimmistola pulchra and he is like not calm at all. He's always been one of those tarantulas that attacks water for no reason, but like look at him. Now the pros about these is that they're usually friendly and they are this really stunning black coloration as they get older, but there are cons, which is the fact that they are a little pricey. They aren't as available as the other species we talked about. Now one thing that does kind of suck about them is that they do grow extremely slow. Not as slow as the Aphonopilma does, but pretty slow. Here's a baby. Right there. And as you see, this one is little and black already. But let's try feeding it. <laughs> awesome takedown. And then I also have a juvenile down here I've been raising for a while. Oops. But yeah, a really cool species and definitely one of my all-time favorites ever. But they're not number one on my list today and let me explain. So you may be wondering why I did not put Grandma Stolopulchra at the top of the list if they're my favorite species. And that's because I think there is one species, well actually a couple, but there is one specific species for the purpose of this video that I think is the ultimate beginner tarantula species. And that is these four babies down here. Mew 2, Mew 3, Mew 4, Mew 4. Five. If you guys remember, if you've been here a long time or if you've just seen that video, which is one of my best performing videos, it's what happened to my rarest tarantula, my Ecampostratus female, Mew. She unfortunately passed away of impaction and after she passed away, a really good friend of mine gifted me four slings. He gave them to me with the hope that at least one of them would also grow into a female. This species is one of the friendliest, best species ever. In fact, I know Exotic Slayer also agrees with me on this like he loves this species also. They're just one of the ultimate beginner species. The only problem with them is the fact that they are super duper hard to find. And that's why I only have slings to show you guys today other than maybe some old footage of Mew. But Mew was very handleable. Mew was very awesome. She was my favorite tarantula for a while. But I have had these four growing for quite a while. And as you'll see, they will readily take crickets from me quite well. They are growing steady, slowly but steady. And this one over here actually stays in this turret a lot. She was just out, so I'm gonna drop in a little cricket right here. So yeah, they are actually really hardy. They're really easy to take care of. They're really friendly. And housing them in just these little cubes. I was gifted four slings and like a year or two later, I still have all four of them, which is a great sign. And I really like housing them just like this. This one is Mew 5, as you see, but just substrate. And then I have gravel on the bottom. I kind of made them little makeshift bioactive cubes. I did a whole video on that. This one made a little turret. 
and kind of stays in there, which is awesome. But yeah, if you are lucky enough to find one of these, they're the pink zebra leg tarantula Ecampus stratus. Definitely grab one up, like you will not regret it. They are just friendly and amazing and they will tolerate handling. A lot of tarantulas won't. Not every single Ecampus stratus will, but for the most part, if you are very insistent on wanting to handle the species you get, this is one that I would think of probably first. So hopefully this helps you guys. And I also would recommend you check out my very old video, even though it's like very like bad, low quality and like awkward and whatever. The species that I talk about there, they're all still great species to start off with as well. But I think I would go with one of these species that I mentioned in this video today if I were out shopping for my first tarantula again. So yeah, I hope this video helped. Like this video if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're not. And you want to be. Don't forget I'm an Instagram that is probably way too much. It's at tarantula.cat. You can go follow me there. Also, the Patreon podcast and Teespring. It is all linked down below. I also have this shirt. It's a new design. And yeah, I will see you guys soon. Let's get into the Patreon pet picks.